Hey everyone, I'm Stephen Lane, your classmate for the whole semester. How's it going? Uh, I'm going to talk to you guys about digital archiving and digital preservation. Right behind me we have a, an example of a physical display for our physical archival materials. And behind me we have a preservation box on how we preserve our physical materials which looks a lot different in a digital format. So come along, we'll talk a little bit about what that all is about. What is a digital archive? A digital archive features a physical library's archival collection, or it can feature digitally born materials. So those would include your e-journals and e-books and things like that. It can also be used to display your archival collection in a digital format, and I'll show you an example of that a little bit later. Materials can be downloaded for reuse and research, which is also an important, and it can be accessed anywhere in the world with an internet connection. Content DM is one example that the Indianapolis Public Library uses as its, uh, as its digital platform to feature its archival materials. And it's great for displaying archival materials, great for making those materials discoverable. You can browse, you can even do a text search of the collections and materials can be downloaded for reuse. Let me show you the Indianapolis Public Library Digital Indie website right here and it features everything to do with Indianapolis history and we also have a great yearbook collection you can find your family if they went to uh, high school here in Indianapolis so I can put in my name and filter it to my high school Lawrence Central go Bears and then press go and here is a page that features some people I haven't seen in quite a while. <laughs> and if I go down, there's my name highlighted here, and then there's my picture right there. Up here at the top, this is where you can download the page in different size formats, and you can also print. All right, that's enough embarrassing myself for today. Next, we have DSpace, which is primarily used by academic libraries. It is a library repository for academic created research, so scholarly, scholarly communications um, that has been created by the professors and researchers and grad students at the academic institution. It is a free download. It uses XML metadata, uh, which is great for uh, finding things um, on, on the internet. Uh, and one example site is the Kader Open Access Repository um, in the UK. And it's interesting to note that this, uh, this software is used mostly by um, academic institutions outside of the United States. And it is great if your academic institution has a low library budget. Next is ePrints. It is another type of platform for academic institutions to, to deposit their own scholarly content. So it is a great tool for preservation um, and to find those um, that research at the uh, academic institution. What's interesting about this, about ePrints, is that you can deposit emails uh, for digital preservation. This is one thing that historians are really talking about is how our digitally created content, how is it going to be preserved for future re reuse and discover? So um, professors can actually submit their email emails for the ePrints uh, software. The only downside to ePrints that I can find is that it doesn't support Boolean searching. Users will kind of will need to have an idea of what they are searching for. It is also a free download though. And when you are searching, you can filter through subject headings. So you can, if you have an idea of what you're looking for, you can filter through those subject headings and find it um, with a relative ease. Then we come to Portico, which is, uh, is an interesting um, piece of software. It's a third party service for archiving content from publishers. And academic institutions and the publishers sign up for Portico. So it, they and the publishers submit their e-journals and their e-books, um, and participating members can can access that material. However, Portico is not a replacement for those subscriptions, 
with the publishers and the academic institutions. What Portico is for is if those publishers ever go out of business, then their information, their content is still available to the academic institutions and things like that. I mean, you can also think about it um, if there's an ever a natural disaster or that knocks out a publisher or a man-made uh, disaster such as a war that happens and the publisher ceases to exist or its server ceases to exist, Portico can step in and it has those copies and can put those um, the, that content online. And a lot of times when a publisher ceases to exist in Portico, they have the deal worked out with Portico and the, those, um, that content is available through open access. So I hope this gives uh, librarians a better understanding of what's available to them in terms of digital preservation and archiving. And here's my contact information. I would be happy to answer any questions that you have. And thank you all for such a great semester.